Hey, this is Digital by Computing, and today we're going to talk about what your password should look like, how the complexity of your password should be done so that you have a secure password and that it's harder for somebody to even guess or get into your account because of your hard password. Hey, my name is Emilio, and today we are talking about what is a good password to have. We have gone through on a previous video, a list of passwords that you should not be using. So do check out that video to know what passwords you shouldn't be using and the most common passwords. But today we're talking about what are the sorts of passwords, structures, complexities that you should be putting in place across your systems. Now, the very first thing that I would recommend for anybody um, that has got multiple accounts, which is probably all of you, you've probably got a you know, a mail account, a Gmail account, or a Yahoo account or something. You've probably got a Facebook, you've got some banking accounts, you've got a few other accounts around here. The last thing you wanna do is have the same password for everything. So that's my, my very first tip, is always have a different password for every system, because if somebody knows one password, you don't want them to be able to access everything because they know just this one password. Make sure that your password is at least eight characters long. Don't have a password that is four characters or a small little group of five or six characters or even a simple word. Have your password to be at least eight characters long. Longer could be better, but not always the case, but at least eight characters long. Have your password to contain a mix of multiple numbers and multiple uppercase and lowercase alpha characters. Um, so don't just have all lowercase and a number or all uppercase and a number. Have a combination of uppercase and lowercase and more than one number in a strange combination. Throw in a uh, random special character into your password as well to make it more complex. This could be a hash sign, an at sign, an exclamation mark, you know, a full stop, an underscore, any of those sort of special characters that are not alphanumeric will create a complexity for a password that you have. You should not be using common words in a password. So let's say you love going to the beach. You shouldn't have your password as being beach and then 1970 as the year of your birth, okay? Anybody who would know you is gonna go, hmm, what does uh, Jack love to do? Well, he loves to go to the beach and he was born in 1970. Oh, there you go, beach 1970. Don't use simple words like that. If you do want to use a simple word or a, a singular word, try to combine two words together that maybe don't have anything to do with each other with perhaps a, uh, you know, a, a set of numbers in there as well with a character. And if you can, change your password often enough, okay? Um, you have to realize sometimes that a password that has been used uh, for the last 10 years probably isn't a good thing, you know, especially if you've used that password on more than one system or more than one website, and that website, for whatever reason, has been hacked, and not to scare you, but that sort of thing does happen, does happen a bit more frequently than uh, a lot of people realize. If a website has been hacked and they've accessed a database worth of passwords, your password could be floating out there on the internet. If you go ahead and change your password, maybe once every three months as a good practice, or every six months, even once a year, you know, that's a long time, but that just ensures that your password is more secure and is less likely to get uh, compromised if somebody does have access to your password for whatever reason. So that is just really a summary on the best password combination or complexity that you can use. Uh, we will go in another video in a bit more detail of what are some good practices around passwords. We're gonna be talking about password management systems and some other things that you can be putting in place around strengthening your passwords and ensuring that your passwords are always secure. But that is for now, a simple guide on what password structure you should be using across your accounts. I would love it if you like this video and subscribe to Digital Byte Computing just down there and um, you know you can also subscribe and get notifications of my upcoming videos. I talk a lot about technology and all the things that excite me in the IT world. Hope that excites you too. But either way, look, like this video, subscribe as well, and we'll see you next time.